page you can see some magic happening on the left hand side but that should redirect to playlists and now this is a list of all of my playlists my actual playlist on Spotify by the way. What's up everyone and welcome to this video. Today we're going to write a Python program that retrieves a user's playlist on Spotify. We're going to do it using the OAuth authentication mechanism. This is one of the tricky topics that catches out many programmers who aren't familiar or don't have a good understanding of OAuth. OAuth is definitely one of the most popular mechanisms for authentication by not just Spotify but a dozen other APIs. In this video I'm going to give you a really good foundational understanding of OAuth. I'm going to explain exactly what it is, what problem it's solving and how it typically works. We're then going to write our own Python program that doesn't use any kind of library but instead implements OAuth from scratch. This video will give you a solid understanding of OAuth that will help you build apps and websites that work with the Spotify API. But on top of that you'll be able to take this blueprint understanding of OAuth and apply it when you're working with other APIs that require it. Buckle up your seatbelts because this is going to be a very exciting and informative tutorial. By the way before you even start this video please click the like button and please do subscribe if you want to learn programming with projects. My goal on this channel is to teach programming in a fun and interesting way with exciting projects and not the way I learned which was through very boring and mundane tutorials. I'll of course add chapters to this video so feel free to skip to relevant sections but I highly recommend that the old section is one that you watch and you pay particular attention to. Alright intro out of the way let's get started. So let's start off by having a look at the Spotify web API documentation and as you can tell since the last video I made they've completely revamped it and it looks a lot nicer. They have added a lot more detail in the documentation and they've even rewritten some of the sections. So what we'll do is we'll navigate through uh, that documentation. I'll explain it to you and the reason why is because it's quite important for you kind of to understand exactly what data you'll be able to have access to if you build an application where you're going to make use of a user's Spotify data. So I'll help you navigate through it. And of course, the purpose of this tutorial is really for you to understand OAuth and how you can implement OAuth um, with the Spotify API. So the first thing we want to do is click on documentation and then click on the web API. And as you notice, this is sort of grouped into two sections. So the first section are quick links. And this is all about, you know, quickly giving you an overview of the Spotify API, how you can get started, but the section that we want to focus on is concepts. The way to think about concepts is that each one of these, you need to have a basic understanding of how they work if you're thinking about working with the Spotify API. The access token as an example just gives you an idea of how you can go about passing in an access token when you make a call out to the Spotify API. As you can tell, it's quite basic, but other concepts like authorization are slightly more complex, um, but we will go through this particular section because we're going to implement OAuth and in particular, we're going to implement the authorization code because that's the one that's going to give us access to a user's Spotify data. There's other concepts like rate limits and scopes, and these two are going to be especially important if you're actually thinking about building a real app or website that's going to work with the Spotify API and you're going to release that to real users. You kind of want to have a good understanding of things like scopes, things like rate limits, as they will affect the flow and the permissions that your application uh, has access to and so you want to give a quick read of these concepts I highly recommend it but of course uh, we're going to focus on authorization for this tutorial we are going to touch on scopes too one more section I just want to highlight is the tutorial section and as you notice there's only four articles here each one corresponds to one of the OAuth2 mechanisms and I think they've done that because OAuth2 is definitely quite tricky to understand and also implement and so they've written dedicated tutorials for each one of these but for the purposes of this video, I'm going to explain them to you and we're also going to work through a real example. So you only need to watch this video and you have a really good understanding of how you can go about implementing OAuth2 and in particular, I would say the primary authentication mechanism that's going to give you access to most of what you need for your own app or website. Okay, so the other section you want to take a look at is the reference section and you'll be spending quite a bit of time here. This is where you can get creative and, you know, depending on the application you want to build, this is where you'll be spending quite a bit of time to understand exactly what you can do when it comes to working with the Spotify API. Now, of course, I'm expecting that you have used Spotify, so this will be more intuitive to you. So, for example, if I click onto playlists, I can see, for example, if I want to retrieve a user's playlist, I probably want to click get user's playlist, right? Um, but there's other uh, areas too, like artists. I can get a particular artist. Um, if I want to access the player, I can actually start uh, and resume playback. So this is pretty cool. Maybe I want to build an app that can trigger 
the play button on my Spotify, maybe on a different device. This is one way of doing that. It's really cool. So, you know, you can spend a bit of time here. You can get quite creative. But let's click onto one of these so you can kind of understand what it looks like and how Spotify has uh, have structured it. So I've clicked on get current users playlists. And if you look at the top, it says get a list of the playlists owned or followed by the current Spotify user. And you notice that there's this padlock icon Oath 2.0, which is to say that you'll need to implement this authorization mechanism to be able to get access to this. So every one of these endpoints follows the same format in that the top will explain what the endpoint does. It will tell you if you need any particular authorization scopes. We'll cover that a bit more later on, so don't worry uh, too much about that right now. It will tell you what you need to include in the request that you make out to the Spotify API, right? Um, and it will tell you if it's required or not required. And then it will give you a detailed idea of the responses that you can expect back from the Spotify API. So what they'll do is they'll tell you the different kind of responses. 200 means successful, 41 means unauthorized, 43 means forbidden. And then each one will have a different kind of object of data returned to you. And the best thing is, or the really cool thing, is that each item in that object, um, as you can see, is explained. So for example, limit here is going to be an integer. Uh, it's a required in the response, so you'll definitely be getting it back. It'll tell you exactly what it is. And it'll give you an example value. So this is very well written. Honestly, it's uh, a really good update that Spotify have made to the API documentation. So hats off to the technical writing team. The right hand side is where I can actually test this endpoint. So remember on the left, I said that the request will tell you exactly what you need to provide. In this case, we don't actually need to provide the limit or the offset. They're not required parameters, but you know, for the sake of argument, let's say I set that limit to 10. I can set the offset to 10 and then I can try it, click try it. And I'm logged in right now. So you need to log in if you don't already have a Spotify account. And then when I click try it, it will make the call out to the API uh, with my authenticated user, right? And then I'll get back the actual response that I can expect. And the reason why this is fantastic is because A, it's real data. And B, I can actually take this data and I can put it in a test case in my own app and I recommend doing this if you're building an app or website that you can push out to production. You can take this data, put it in the test and test against it. And this is really cool because again, this is real data. And so you can test against the structure or specific values in each one of these keys. Right, so that wraps up that section. Now you have a good understanding of how you can go about navigating the Spotify web API. Now what I'm going to do is explain Oath 2.0. Start off by giving you a very basic conceptual understanding of how it works because it's quite relevant not only for the Spotify API, but all other APIs that you'll eventually work with. And then what we'll do is look at the specific authorization code Oath 2.0 flow. I know that's a bit of a mouthful, but that's the one that Spotify require us to use when it comes to working with the API to get access to the data that we need. Now, Oath 2.0 is just a way for APIs to allow you to get access to a user's data or do things on behalf of a user. Spotify give you four different Oath 2 options. And so the question is, which one should we use and why? If you go into the authorization article in concepts and scroll down to the bottom, Here's Spotify address, which OAuth flow that you should use and why. For example, if you're developing a long running application like a web app running on a server and the user is going to authenticate once and you can store that secret in a safe place, then authorization code flow is the recommended choice as they've mentioned here. And in the table, they break down what each one gives you in terms of the data that you can access and whether you can refresh that token. My previous video, I believe we use client credentials, but the issue was a you can't access user specific data. So, for example, some of the endpoints that we looked at where you might want to retrieve a user's playlist, you can't do that with this authorization option. The other thing is that you can't refresh the access token and it only lasts for an hour. So that means that you're going to constantly have to manually get that token and then reissue that call out to the Spotify API. That's not great if you're trying to build an application that needs constant access to the Spotify API or anything longer than an hour. We're going to make use of the authorization code because that's going to give us access to the user's resources. In other words, you know, their playlists and albums. Um, we are going to provide a secret key and that's fine. But more importantly, and the most important thing is that we're going to be able to refresh the access token. And that's key because we want to build an application that's going to make requests to the Spotify API and we're going to be able to refresh them without the user having to log in again and again. Right, so I want to spend this section explaining Oath to you in a way that's really easy to understand. 
Spotify web APIs documentation and the specific section where they explain OAuth, I think it isn't great. The diagram is quite convoluted. So if you are a technical writer at Spotify watching this video, I highly recommend if you guys do have the time to improve that section. But for my viewers of this video, what I want to do is explain OAuth to you in depth. I've prepared some custom diagrams for you that will explain OAuth in the context of Spotify's API, but in a way that you'll be able to kind of understand what problem it's trying to solve. And this blueprint understanding that you'll take away will not only be relevant as you work with the Spotify API, but also other APIs that you use in the future because most other production APIs offer and require OAuth. Let's say you're building your own Spotify recommendation website that's going to look at all of a user's songs and recommend songs to them and hopefully it does a better job than uh, Spotify do at the moment which I don't think is great for recommending songs but say in theory that you're building this website now let's say a user maybe your friend visits the website and they're going to give it a try what your website is going to do is it's going to call out to the Spotify API and what the user is going to see is they're going to see the option to log in with the Spotify API now that login page and again we're going to see this in action when it comes to building with our real example in python but what they'll see is a page that says login with spotify and spotify will also show that this user your friend exactly what permissions that you're requesting remember we saw authorization scopes early on they're going to be translated into permissions here so that the user your friend is aware of exactly what data your website is going to have access to and so they're going to log in with Spotify and this is the point where they're going to give permission for you to be able to access that data. Once the user logs in with Spotify that makes a call out to Spotify's API and what they'll do is give us back some data specifically they're going to give us back the access token the refresh token and expires in. Now the access token is what we're going to use on our website to then make our request to Spotify's API. This is super important. So let's say for example, we want to create an album. Maybe we want to create a playlist. Maybe we want to pause the current playing song. Anytime our website makes a request out to Spotify's API, we're going to need to provide this access token that was given to us. Now, although I mentioned that when we want to make a request out to the Spotify API, we provide the access token, there's one more thing that we need to do, and this kind of summarizes OAuth, which is we want to check if the access token has expired before we make any kind of call. Now, you remember early on when Spotify gave us this piece of data called expires in? That essentially tells us exactly when an access token expires. An access token only lasts for a certain period of time. If I remember correctly, it only lasts for a day. So that means if your website tries to make a request out to Spotify's API and the access token has expired, Spotify won't give back the data. You'll need to re-authenticate. So what we want to do is we want to anticipate that, right? So instead, we make use of what Spotify gave us earlier, which is the refresh token. And so how does this work? So in this case, what we do is we have our website do a quick check to see if the access token has expired. And we can check that because we already have the piece of data that tells us exactly when the access token expires. If it has expired, we need to make another request out to Spotify's API to a specific endpoint where we're going to pass in the refresh token. Again, this was given to us earlier on. And what that will do is Spotify in response is going to say, hey, that refresh token is valid. That was given at the point when the user logged in with Spotify and gave you permission in the first place. And so what we're going to do, given that all of that is valid, we're going to give you back a fresh access token with a fresh expires in. The expires in usually doesn't change. I, if, if I remember correctly, that should also, well, that, that will be the same. So I think in this case, it will still be a day. But the main thing is that the access token is different and we have a new fresh access token that we can use going forward in requests um, that we make out to Spotify's API. All right, so it's time to start coding. For this tutorial, we're going to be using VS Code, which is my editor. I typically use PyCharm for Python projects, but I also switch between VS Code if it's you know a fairly quick Python project that I'm working on. First thing you wanna do is create a folder in your directory where you store all your developer projects. In this case, I've created one called Spotify OAuth example. That's what I've called my project and I've opened VS Code in that folder. So I'm now in the directory 
there's no files at the moment and this is where we're going to start off by looking at the dependencies that we're going to need for the project the first thing i want to check is that you've got python installed so you can do that by typing python and tap enter by the way i've got the terminal open that's one handy thing about vs code that you can have a terminal and you have your code editor um, and in this case i've typed python i've tapped enter and my python is showing as 3.11 which is correct if you have 3.5 i think that's fine as long as you have python 3 if you don't have um if this isn't returning anything it probably means that you don't have python installed at all so type python 3 if you tap enter and you don't get anything back either you definitely don't have python 3 installed so install python 3 and then hopefully when you type python 3 or python one of those should work and give you back python 3 if you have any issues just let me know in the comments below and there are plenty of uh, youtube videos on how you can install python on your machine once you've got python installed the next step is to install two libraries that we're going to be using for this project the first one is flask that is going to be our web server and that is going to be a core of where we're going to write our application that's going to reach out to the spotify api and the next library is going to be requests this is a library that's going to make out the calls to spotify's api so if i type pip install flask request that should install both dependencies now i do use pip env i don't know how many of you are familiar with pip env pip env is a way for you to have um, isolated dependencies for a project so say for example one project you might want to install flask uh, a specific version of flask another project you want to install a different version of flask um, you want to have a different set of packages pip env allows you to isolate those packages in a nice way and i do use that but i'm keeping this tutorial very simple um i want to get you set up with the bare bones of just getting this to work and again the focus of this tutorial is oauth so now both of those packages are installed we're going to add a new file and we're going to call it main.py and this is going to be where we write most of our code for the application so spotify have a requirement that if you want to use their api you have to create an app on their dashboard so you can do that by heading to developer.spotify.com dashboard and then you have this button to create app so click that in the app name you can put anything i'm just going to put spotify or with python example which is already in the clipboard the description is also required so i'm just going to paste that here same thing doesn't really matter too much and the reader the website you can leave blank the redirect UI we are going to populate and I'm going to populate it with this which is http colon slash slash localhost colon 5000 slash callback. What this is doing as, as it says here um, this is going to give us back or it's going to tell Spotify how they can give us back the access token the refresh token and the expires in and exactly where they can give that data back to and so this is where we're going to get back that data we're going to build this endpoint in our python app click on this checkbox then click save and then you're good to go one cool thing about this by the way is that when you create an app again this is just an example but if you create a real app you can start to monitor things and it's really cool that spotify give you the ability to monitor you know everything from who's using your app on a daily basis on a monthly basis how many requests are being made what countries it's quite cool so um if you do build an app uh, that you release to real users that makes use of the Spotify API definitely check out um, this page in a bit more detail all right so I'm back in my main.py file in this code and the first thing we're going to do is import the flask library you do that by typing from flask import flask we're also going to make use of the request library I'll just move that up here um, for this project we're going to be using flask it's a very easy way to create a simple but also scalable rest apis in python and then the next thing we're going to do is initialize the flask app so we do that by typing app is equal to flask followed by the name directive and then one more thing we need to do is we need to set the secret key for the app and i'm going to set this to some arbitrary string now the reason why we're doing this is because if you want to make use of the flask session which we need to do because we need a place to put the access token and the refresh token given to us by spotify api for us to have access to that flask session um, we need to set a secret key for the app by the way a session just means that you'll be able to store data in a place where you can then access it later on between requests both when a user accesses our own api or flask app as well as uh, when we make calls to the spotify api within that we have like think of it like an area where we can store things and access them uh, in our app uh, between requests 
next piece of groundwork that we want to lay out is setting up the constants that we're going to use throughout our flask app so the first one is going to be the client id and this is going to be provided by spotify um, on the dashboard i'll show you how you can get access to that uh, in a second the second thing we're going to need is the client secret again this is available on the spotify dashboard i'll leave these empty for now and then the redirect uri which we do have access to or we already know this is the one that we set on the uh, on the dashboard on spotify when we created our app so that was http localhost 5000 slash callback okay and then oh missed that and then a few more constants that we're going to need to set up are the urls that we're going to use to get the token from spotify refresh to the token as well as um, the api base url uh, for spotify's api so auth url and this is going to be equal to https it's accounts spotify.com authorize okay um, i'm going to duplicate that if that and then the next one is the token url so this is where we're going to refresh the token and i believe that's api slash token and then the api base url i believe is https slash api dot spotify dot com slash v1 slash okay so let's let me show you how you can get the client id and the client secret from the spotify dashboard right so to get the client id and the client secret what you want to do is go to the spotify dashboard so head to developer.spotify.com and then click the dashboard then find the app that you created early on in my case it was spotify or with python example once you click onto that then click on settings and then you can see the client id right here and then you can click this option to view the client secret and then what you want to do is click this button to copy it so copy both of these and paste them in vs code and we'll continue coding so when the user visits our flask app for the first time we want to show them a welcome message and then we want to give them a link that they can click uh, which will redirect them to the spotify login page so we do that um, or we can start off by creating a simple root and this is going to be the root of the flask app and then I'm going to call this index. And then all we're going to do is return a HTML link. So let, yeah, let's do welcome to my Spotify app. And then I think it's going to be a link. Uh, and then we're going to set this to slash login. So we're going to create this endpoint in a second. And then what we'll do is we'll say login with spotify okay so again when they visit our flask app the root what will happen is they'll see this welcome message and then they can click on this login with spotify button and that's going to redirect them to the endpoint that we're going to create now okay so let's create the login endpoint now this is the endpoint where we need to redirect to spotify's login page and if you remember earlier i mentioned that we're going to need some permission scope so you know when we went over the spotify documentation we, we saw that certain endpoints required certain permissions. This is the point where we need to declare what those permissions are. Again, you can find this in the documentation. And then what we need to do is we need to redirect or make a request to Spotify's API saying that we want the user who's using our website to log in with Spotify. These are the permissions that we're after. And then they will give us back the uh, access token. So we can do that uh, by creating the login route. So that's going to be slash login and then i'm going to just call this login and then here let's create a variable called scope and this is going to score store the scopes that we need um i think the two scopes that we're after are going to be the reading a user's private playlists and albums and then the second one is user read email we don't necessarily need this but spotify has included this in their documentation so let's just follow that the next thing that we need to do is we need to create the params and this is what we're going to pass over to the call that we make to spotify they require a few parameters so let's declare them now so params is going to equal the client id and we have this from above the next one we're going to need to set is the response type. Now in Spotify's documentation, 
they've said that you need to set this to code so we're going to do that the second thing is we pass in the scope which is the scope uh, of permissions that we're going to need uh, from the user so we can set that to the scope variable that we created the next one is the redirect URI this is where Spotify is going to redirect to um, on successful or failed login and we have that from above and then there's one more option here now by default this option is false and I'm going to set it to true I'll explain it I'll explain why so when a user visits you know so when a user visits our main page they see the welcome message they click login with Spotify they're going to be redirected to the login with Spotify page right now when they do that successfully and they log in successfully when they come back to this login page because of the fact that the access token is saved the user doesn't need to log in with Spotify again so this option would by default be false which means um, even if we make the request here to Spotify, uh, Spotify's authorization URL they're going to say well they've already logged in so they don't need to log in again right so you don't need to set that the reason why I'm going to set this to true for the purposes of debugging and testing locally I want to force the user in other words I'm, I'm the one testing locally to log in every time I just want to do that just to make my uh, life a bit easier and testing a bit easier locally but you can emit this and I recommend of course emitting it uh, later on when it comes to running the application but I'm going to leave it as true because I want to use it for testing right so in Spotify's documentation they say that you need to make a get request to an authorization URL which we declared above with these params and we can use the request library in Python to do that but Spotify in their documentation in the JavaScript example instead they just redirect to a URL which is the equivalent of a get request and they pass the params which I quite like so we're going to do it that way so to do that what we're going to do is we're going to create a variable called auth URL and this is going to be a format string in Python and then we're going to pass in the auth URL again this is from above here we declared this earlier on slash authorize and then what we're going to do is we're going to need to encode these params so let's put the question mark and then to encode the params we're going to use a library called urllib which does that for us so that's urllib your encode I believe it's that and then we're going to need to import it above I believe it's uh, import URL lib dot pass uh, I'll put that here just keep it clean okay so I think that's the auth URL set up and then all we need to do is return a redirect to the auth URL and that redirect we're going to need to import above from fast import redirect okay so I think that's us pretty good for now so what's going to happen is we're going to make a request to Spotify's authorization URL we're going to pass the params including the scope that's going to give us access to be able to retrieve their playlist later on we're going to redirect because this is a nice way to do it um, yeah and so let's move on to the next endpoint okay so let's write the code now for the callback endpoint and just a reminder this is the callback that Spotify are going to come back to the moment the user logs in with Spotify now there's two scenarios one scenario is that the user logs in successfully in which case Spotify are going to give us back a code which we're going to use to then request an access token I'll get into more detail in a second the other scenario is that the user doesn't log in successfully maybe they cancelled maybe something failed in which case Spotify is going to call the callback endpoint that we're going to write but they're going to give us back an error so we need to account for both of those cases success and error so let's start off by writing app.root slash callback and then I'm going to call this def callback and then so the first thing we want to do is check if Spotify gave us an error um, this style is called defensive programming we want to eliminate all the options before we move on to uh, the success state so first thing we want to do is check if error exists in the request that came back with the arguments the query parameters that came back uh, from Spotify they're going to send it as like get parameters um, so we need to check in the request object 
and I believe we need to import that. Oh, we've already got imported, so that's fantastic. And then, yeah, that's fine. Okay, so if the um, error exists, for now, what we're just going to do is return it back to the user. We'll keep it simple, so we'll do return JSONify um, error, and this is the error dot R, well, the error plus args, and then error. Very simple for now, we'll just return the error back, nothing uh, too crazy. Now, um, assuming that Spotify never returned the error, um, in which case the user login was successful, what they will give back is a code parameter. And in that code is um, a string, but the more, more important thing is we are going to need to send that code in another request to get the access token. So it feels like you know, you're having to do quite a lot of work just to get this access token to make a call to the Spotify's API. It's all in the name of security, um, but yeah, let's uh, let's just continue. It's, it can be a bit frustrating when it feels like you know you have to lay all of this groundwork, but it's quite fun if you understand what's going on, and of course you're learning, so I guess we're both having fun. So if code, uh, so the parameter that the Spotify is gonna return back is code. So we say if code is in request.org, similar to what we did above. Then what we want to do is we want to now build up a uh, request body, which is going to have some data that we're going to send off to Spotify um, so that we can get back the access token. So Spotify requires some information. So I'm just going to say uh, rec body is equal to. So the first thing that they require is the code that they gave us. So that's easy enough. Quest.org's code. The second thing that they require is the grant type. Now, this is just set to authorization code. Um, okay. The third thing is the redirect URI. Um, even though I believe they don't use this, um, I believe you mentioned in their docs they don't use this, but they still want it for whatever reason in this request. And then they want the client ID and the client secret, which we have access to from above. get that can I get it <laughs> bear in mind I'm not looking at my keyboard all the time when I'm typing so sometimes uh, uh, I do miss okay cool so once we've got the request body ready it's time to now send that off to Spotify so that's easy enough what we're going to do is create a response variable and then we'll do requests dot post I believe we've imported request above yet yeah, fantastic request dot post and then the URL that we're going to post off to is this token URL. That's the one, um, so accounts.spotify.com slash API slash token. That's the one where we're going to send off the request body. Um, and then hopefully Spotify will give us back the access token. And then the data in here is just going to be the equals to request body. And then if all goes well, um, we assume all is going to go well, hopefully Spotify will give us back token info. And this is going to come back as a JSON object. So to extract the JSON from the request or the response, we do is type response.json. Okay, now token info is going to contain a few pieces of data, um, but the most, the ones that we care about, there's about, I think there's five, but the ones that, uh, yeah, the ones that we care about are access token. I'm just going to type this out just so you know. Um, Oh, I've got this short, shortcut set up, so it's messing things up. The refresh token. And then the other one is um, expires in. These are all key pieces of information. Um, the access token is what we're going to use to make a request to Spotify um, API. The refresh token is what we're going to use to refresh this access token when it expires. This access token only lasts for one day. How do I know that? Expires in is uh, the number of seconds that this access token lasts for. And Spotify set that to, it's always 3,600. The token only ever lasts for, as of recording, the token uh, only ever lasts for one day. So after a day, the access token that they've given us is going to expire. So we're going to have to get a new access token. Now the way Spotify want us to do that, this is the magic of OAuth is, we have a refresh token which we're going to send off to Spotify and say, hey, 
our access has been spied, but you gave me a refresh token from early on. I'm giving that to you now so I can prove who I am and I've got access. And then what they'll do is they'll send you back a access token and they'll send you back expires and just to let you know how long that token is going to last for. These are the three pieces of information that we need to store and we need to keep between requests, right? Because ultimately at some point in time later on, after you know a dozen requests are made on our Flask app, we are going to need, uh, that access token will expire and so we're going to need to refresh that token. And this needs to happen sort of in the background without much user disruption, right? So these are the pieces of information. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, well, let's, uh, we're going to put this in the session. The, the, there is one thing I want to do to make our lives a bit easier for now. Um, this corresponds to the number of seconds that this token is going to last for. Um, I would rather at this point in time set up some logic to calculate okay what does this actually mean like in terms of a date time like um and i would rather store that in the session now so later on or if check just looks a bit nicer so what do i mean by that so the first thing is let's just put this in the session to keep this very simple so access token is going to uh, be stored in the session uh we'll store the refresh token in the session um yeah we'll store the refresh token in the session Expire now. I'm not going to store expires in, in the session. What I'm going to do is change that to uh, yeah, I'll we'll say expires at, and I want this to be a timestamp, uh, which is going to be uh, let's do date time dot now dot timestamp plus. Uh, the token info expires in okay so what this will do um, is it's going to get the current date time um, like the current time uh, the date time and I'm going to turn it into a timestamp this is handy because um, date times generally can be quite difficult to work with um, especially when you're working or you're building an app that's meant to work in different time zones, it can get a bit fiddly. And I I could have left this blank. I could have just, you know, uh, calculated uh, the current date time and I could have appended and I could have just added a day and said, okay, this is when it's going to expire. But Python can be a bit funky with local time zones. So I'm going to make it even easier by using timestamp. Very handy. Um, it essentially corresponds to the same thing and what that will do is I'm going to get a timestamp which is the number of seconds since epoch and then I'm going to add the number of uh, seconds that the token expires in Spotify is going to give us that back I, I mentioned that it's going to be 3600 put all that all together and in the end we're going to have a timestamp that is exactly when the token expires right the reason why I'm putting this in this session now is just it's going to make our lives easier because we're going to need to write some logic to check if the access token has already expired and if so we need to refresh it so I'm just going to make my life a bit easier now okay so I think the last thing that we want to do is the moment that we've stored all of the data that Spotify have given us back um, for the access token we're going to redirect to getting the user, uh, an endpoint that we're going to write which is going to use this access token uh, access token to get the users playlist so that's going to be simple redirect slash playlist okay okay it's time for us to now put this access token to good use by now writing an endpoint that's going to retrieve the current users playlist so let's create the endpoint app dot root and we're going to call this playlists and we're going to call it get playlists okay all right so the first thing that we want to do is check if the access token is in the session um, so theoretically we're redirecting to this playlist endpoint and at this point in time we should have the access token stored in the session so we're just again doing some kind of defensive programming which is to say let's just check for any errors and handle those cases now so if access token not in session then what we want to do is redirect back to the login 
So the user will have to log in again. And then hopefully once they log in again, the access token will be then put into the session. If, however, the access token does exist in the session, uh, that means the next thing that we want to do is check if it's expired. So, you know, here uh, we set expires are equal to the time stamp, which corresponds to exactly when the token expires. So let's make use of that logic now. Before we make any request to the Spotify's API, let's make sure we check that the access token hasn't expired. Um, rather than making the request and being told, hey, it's expired, let's do that on our side. So the first thing that we need to do is if we say if date time dot now dot timestamp is more than the session and then this is going to be expires at then that means expires at is now in the past which basically means that it's expired in that case we want to redirect them back to uh well we want to refresh a token that um we haven't written this endpoint yet but we will write this endpoint um so what we want to do is when the user tries to we try to retrieve the user's playlists um if the access token has expired we automatically refresh it in the background the user's not disrupted they're not asked to log in again um what will happen is we're going to redirect to refresh token and then have that redirect back to retrieving the user's playlist so we haven't written the endpoint yet so don't worry too much about it for now okay now if those if the access token does exist in the session and the token hasn't expired we're good to go so we can actually now make the request to uh, spotify's api to retrieve the user's playlist so the first thing we need to do is set up the headers uh, so that we need to provide the access token in the authorization header i'm going to use a format string uh almost did typescript there <laughs> um all right and then we're going to get the access to, you know what let's uh yeah let's do that so session access token right so this is going to have the access token provided in the authorization header then we create a response variable which is going to store the result of making the request to the endpoint request.post or request.get sorry and we're going to um, provide it the api base url which we have from above so if i just go back here again api.spotify.com slash version one and then the endpoint that we want to target that's going to retrieve the user's playlists is me slash playlists okay and then the next thing we want to provide is the headers so the headers which contains the authorization header which has the access token okay and then once we get the response back if all is well we should now again it's going to be a json response so we want to extract the json and that should correspond to the playlists and then what we want to do for now just to keep it simple we're just going to return the playlists back to the user so that's all well and good uh, let's now write the code for refreshing the token okay so this is the last endpoint that we're going to write and it's going to do the magic that is uh, refreshing the token so we're going to get called call spotify's api with the refresh token that they provided us way back when and we're going to use that to now get a fresh access token and so let's write the root for that at root slash refresh token should move this up actually so it's easier for you guys to see and then refresh token and then the first thing we want to check is if the refresh token is in the session right because if we're going to make a request to refresh a token we should have it and it should be in the session at this point um so it should be just to clarify when we when spotify called the callback endpoint that we wrote here is where we stored the refresh token we stored it in the session so it should be in there we want to do one more check just to make sure it's there um, or oh, well we want to see if it's not in the session then we want to redirect them back to the login return redirect slash login right so if it is in uh, the session it's now time to do one more check which is to see if the access token has expired right um 
what we there's no point of refreshing or yeah there's no point of refreshing the token if the access token hasn't expired right it is perfectly usable so let's make sure that it has expired um before we continue so the way you do that is if date time i think actually we might have the code from above which we can reuse there we go but i will ch change that so this is the chat we're going to see if the access token which again should the expires that should be in the session we're not going to redirect so if it has expired at this point we're going to now make a request uh, to get fresh access token so i'm going to say request body is equal to so there's a few parameters that spotify require uh, for us to get a fresh access token the first is the grant type that needs to be set to refresh token the second of course as you can probably guess is the refresh token and that should again exist in the session and then they want the client id and the client secret which i believe we wrote above so i'm going to be very lazy and copy and paste those down here and that's it and we only need those parameters and that should be enough to, for spotify to now give us back uh, a fresh re uh, access token so let's uh, send off the request request post the url that will or the endpoint that we're going to hit is the one we defined uh, above the token euro that's the one uh, that we're going to use so we do request.post token euro and then the data we're going to set it to the request body which is uh, this and again that has the refresh token and then they're going to give us back some uh, new token info now this is going to contain two things of relevance the first is it's going to contain a new access token and it's also going to contain expires in okay we've seen this already before they're not going to give you a refresh token we've already been given that we've already stored that in the session we're going to use that same refresh token going forward they will give us an access token so what we want to do is in the session well the first thing we want to do is just let's just extract the new token info because it's a json that they give back and then what we want to do is in the session we want to override the access token that we had before so that's going to be the new token info access token and then we want also want to do this now the access token has a new expiry we need to calculate uh, when it expires and we need to update that so again the code for that is here expires that is the same code same calculation um, you could argue and I already see so many different ways I can refactor this to have less code, but I'm keeping this as simple as possible for you guys to understand. Um, we have repeated ourselves a few times here, but the purpose of this tutorial is not to write the most optimal code, is to write code that's good enough where you actually learn something, and hopefully you'll be able to take some good uh, new concepts away uh, from this video and understand it all. So just keep in mind if you have seen those patterns, um, I certainly have, of uh, opportunities to refactor um, you can probably do that maybe that's an exercise that you can do after this video so uh, session expires that we're going to update it with the latest uh, the latest expires in again this is going to be equal to 3600 as of time as of recording but that's fine for now so uh, the expires that has now been updated with the latest time uh, or the time that the uh, the new access token that's been given to us is going to expire right okay cool and then the last thing we need to do is now that the token has been refreshed now that we've got the uh, access token and the expires that stored it's just a matter of now redirecting them back to what they tried to do originally which in this case is going to be retrieving users playlists and i think we're good to go Okay, the last thing we need to do is run our Flask app. The moment we run this application, we want the Flask server to run. So to do that, we type if name is equal to main. And then what we want to do is app.run. And then we want to run it on localhost, which we will provide 0.0.0. .0. And then we're going to set debug equal to true. And that means any code changes that we make, uh, the server will be automatically refreshed. Okay, so now let's give this a run. I'm going to open up the terminal. I'm here. And then what we'll do is we'll type Python 3 
main.py and as you can tell it's running so we didn't have any code errors which is fantastic I'm going to now open this up in the browser and give you a demo of the end result all right so I've got this open side by side so you can see both but here we can see that our welcome message is showing which is fantastic welcome to my Spotify app and we have the link which I'm going to click and that's login with Spotify and as you can tell this is Spotify's login page and as you can tell they show the app that's requesting permission our app we I call this Spotify or with Python example you can see also that it will show the user the permissions that we're requesting so we'll tell them exactly which permissions we're requesting in this case it's the email and we were able to see the public playlists and then the next thing is assuming you haven't already logged in at this point I'm already logged in I just need to agree and if I click agree that should redirect to playlist you can see some magic happen on the left hand side but that should redirect to playlist and now this is a list of all of my playlists my actual playlist on Spotify by the way <laughs> all right and that worked right so this is uh, OAuth in action if I refresh this I'm not asked to log in again as you can tell it's just retrieving the playlist it's using the same access token in the session that already exists which is fantastic and the question that you're probably thinking is well how do we know the refresh token logic that we wrote works right um, and how do we know that when uh, the access token has expired we're getting a new refresh token so unfortunately because the access token expires in a day you know I I would have to like record this tomorrow but I think there's another way which is going to involve overriding something which I'll, I'll do now and hopefully that will prove to you that the refresh token logic works so let's do that now so I'm going to maximize this window and what we're going to do I'm going to stop the server and what we're going to do is let's go to the point where the user uh, we get the callback from Spotify so the moment the user logs in with Spotify um, we Spotify then calls back to our callback endpoint that we wrote here and remember at this point here what we did is we calculated when that token expired right and I've already told you that expires in usually at, at the time of recording is about 3600 seconds which is one day let's do this one thing which is let's just override it let's just say it expires in ten, uh, 10 seconds so that way we'll do that here and then we'll do that down below and then the reason why I'm doing this is what we can then say we know that based on this logic expires at will now ensure that that access token that we received will expire in 10 seconds right so it will use it so we can keep refreshing the page to retrieve playlists and for 10 seconds that uh, those requests that are made to get the user's playlist will work after 10 seconds it should trigger this refresh token logic here which will make the request to the endpoint to get a, a, a fresh access token and so the easiest way for me to show you that this works is to put some print statements here so what I'm going to do is we'll say that when we hit the endpoint when we load the page to retrieve the playlist if the access token has expired um, which it will expire right after 10 seconds let's just put a print statement token expired refreshing right dot 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 right so we'll put that there and then that will then call this refresh token endpoint and then again we're doing this check here in the refresh token endpoint to make sure that the access token expired I'm going to put that there don't need to you could argue it's redundant but let's just be sure that it is going ahead and uh, refreshing the token right so that should be enough so if I now um, put this to one side and then if I run the server and then if I go back to the home page now if I click login with Spotify I click agree now it has retrieved all my playlists right so I'm gonna refresh this a few times you notice that our print message is not showing but hopefully within the next couple of seconds you see there we go right so as you can tell the token expired um, so on the right hand side you know notice nothing changed here right and that's that's the way we want to build our app so we want all of this to happen in the background the you as a user who's using this website should not be told that you know the access token has expired yeah, I shouldn't see this right all I care about are in this case my playlists are loading right but on the left hand side us as developers 
we want to make sure that the logic that we put in place and the code that we've written works right so here you can tell what happened is uh, for the earlier requests those were fine the access token was used beyond 10 seconds that's when we started refreshing and you know I've been talking for more than 10 seconds so if I re refresh the page again you can see it's expired and it's refreshing again so that is our example um, working so yeah you guys just implemented all and uh, quite proud all right so we've reached the end of the video you learned a ton firstly you got a good understanding of how you can go about navigating the Spotify web API you built a really good understanding of OAuth and how it's used with the Spotify API and you also implemented your very own example in Python you stuck to the end and honestly you've learned so much in this video to the point where you'll be able to take this knowledge and apply it for implementing OAuth with other APIs there are thousands of APIs that require developers to use OAuth when authenticating with them so hopefully you now have a much better understanding of how you can go about doing that i'm just going to ask you for one thing and that is to give me a subscribe if you want to learn programming with fun and exciting projects my goal is to teach programming in a way that's fun and interesting and not the way i learned which was through very boring mundane tutorials hopefully i've given you a taste of what that's like in this video and i definitely have a lot more ideas for projects in the future there's one more thing that I wanted to mention before I close out the video and that is why I didn't use the Spotify library in this video. Spotify is a library written in Python that makes it easier to implement OAuth with the Spotify API. It actually takes care of a handful of things that we did in this video and so the question is why didn't I use it? The reason why is because in this video I wanted to give you a solid foundational understanding of OAuth and how you can implement it from scratch. If we had used the Spotify library, then it wouldn't have given us room to do that. And the good thing is, if you really want to, you can use the Spotify library now. You can install it and I guarantee you'll be able to implement it with a lot more confidence. But if some of you really want me to, I'm happy to make a dedicated video using the Spotify library. Just let me know in the comments below. Other than that, thanks a lot for watching. Enjoy the rest of the day wherever you're watching from and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.